The next library I'm going to demonstrate is Google Volley. Volley was created by members of the Android development team, and it goes much further than OKHttp. OK OKHttp OK is essentially a replacement for HTTP URL connection, which adds failover and other robust features. But Volley handles everything you need to do when working over the network. It handles the HTTP request, but it also manages the asynchronous task that you need to use when you're working with network requests. Volley is not particularly well documented, and in fact, when you download it from the website, shown here at googlesource.com, you'll find that it isn't even compiled to a jar file. It's up to you to get the code and use it. Now, for convenience, I've compiled it and added it to the exercise files. You can find it in the Assets Software folder, and it's named volley.jar. Notice that it's a tiny jar file, so it won't add much to the footprint of your app. I'll copy that to the clipboard, and then go to Eclipse, where I've opened a project named Volley. And I'll go to the Libs folder, and paste the jar file into place. That adds the jar file to my app's class path. Now I'm ready to use Volley's features. I'll start in the main activity class, where I'm requesting my JSON-based web feed. In the current version of the project, I'm using an async task. But Volley is going to handle that all for me. So I'm going to completely remove the task declaration. I'll then track down all the references to that declaration, including in the request data method, and I'll delete those two lines of code. And up at the top, where I've declared a list of tasks, and I'll delete that as well. And I'll also delete any references to that list. I'll organize my imports, and then I'm ready to start adding the code for working with Volley. Right now, I'm passing in my URL, or URI, to the request data method. And this is where I'll add my Volley code. To work with Volley, you construct a request object. There are a number of different kinds of request objects, but the simplest version is called string request. It does exactly what it says. It requests a string from the network. I'll start by typing string req, and I'll press control space, and that declares the type string request. It also adds string request to my imports. Notice that string request is a member of com.android.volley.toolbox. I'll come back to this code, and I'll name this new object request. Then I'll instantiate it with a constructor method. There are a couple of different constructors. I'll use the first one, where the first argument is a URL. The constructor takes three arguments, a URL, a listener, and an error listener. The volley architecture is built around callback methods. The listener and the error listener will be implementations of interfaces that are a part of the volley library. And each of these interfaces has a method you need to implement. When you get back a successful response, you'll be calling one of these methods. And if an error occurs, you'll be calling another method. First, I'll change the first argument so that I'm using my URI argument. Now, to make the code a little easier to read, I'll separate these two lines of code. And first, I'll replace the listener placeholder. The listener will be an anonymous inner type, an implementation of response.listener. Notice that there's a generic declaration. It's always a string if you're starting off with a string request. If, for example, you were using another kind of request, such as one called JSON array request, then you would be receiving a JSON array. I'll do a quick fix here and import the response class, and then do another quick fix and add unimplemented methods. And that creates a method named onResponse which receives an argument typed as a string. This will be the raw string that's retrieved from the web service. I'm going to name it response. And then, within the onResponse method, I'll use code that's similar to what I've done before. 
I'll take the string that I'm receiving from the web service, a JSON packet, and I'll pass it into my parser class that I created in a previous movie. I'll say flower list, that's my list of flower objects, equals flower JSON parser dot parse feed, and I'll pass in the response. And that's all I need to do to save the data. But then I'll also call my method update display, and that will cause the names of the flowers to be displayed in my list. Next, I'll do my error handling. I'll get rid of that placeholder, and I'll replace it with another anonymous inner type, response.errorListener. Once again, I'll use a quick fix and add unimplemented methods, and this creates a method named onErrorResponse. This callback method will be called if an error occurs, and you'll get an instance of an exception named VolleyError. I'll name that EX, and then within the method, I'll simply report the error to the user. I'm going to use a toast message, so I'll type toast and press control space to add the import. Then I'll call make text, and for the context, I'll use main activity dot this. If I simply use this, I'd be referring to the request object. I want to refer to the activity so that the toast message is displayed in the right context. Then I'll pass in ex.getMessage, and I'll pass in a duration of toast.lengthLong, and then I'll show the message. And so now my request is fully declared. The next step is to add the request to a queue. The Volley library has a queue of requests, and it deals with them first in, first out. As you add a request to the queue, it'll be executed immediately if there are no other requests pending. So I'll declare an instance of a class named request queue, which is a member of com.android.volley, and I'll instantiate it using a method named volley.newRequestQueue, and I'll pass in this as the context. Then I'll add the request to the queue using queue.add and I'll pass in the request. Now, I could add more requests, but for this particular demonstration, I only need one. I'm getting the JSON-based data from my web service and displaying its contents in the app. So I'll save and run the app in the emulator, and when it appears, I'll click the Get Data item, and there's my data. So functionally, this is working exactly the same as when I used HTTP URL connection, but there's significantly less code involved. I'm letting the Volley library handle a lot of the work. It's doing all of the asynchronous task processing, all of the error management, and it's simply going and getting the data and returning it to me in the format that I requested. The Volley library, as I mentioned, is not well documented at this point, but it's incredibly powerful and hopefully it will continue to evolve and improve. In the next movie, I'll show you how to use the Volley library to work with binary resources, the kinds of web-based images that are used in a lot of Android apps.